not allergic to this big board, but what we see here, as you mentioned, Trump right now emerging from last night with 1,057 delegates, though we should note there are still some that have yet to be allocated in some of these states, so I think that number is going to rise a bit. It may, it may hit 1070, a little bit north of that, when all is counted, and that is significant on the Republican side because of this, the magic number of 1,215 delegates. That is what is needed to formally claim the Republican nomination. And again, if you were to add another dozen or so delegates, delegates there to Trump's total. If you were to look at these results last night and then look ahead to next week, what states are voting next week? It is Georgia. It is Mississippi. It is Washington state. It is Hawaii caucus closed primary in two states in the South where we can show you here in a second. Donald Trump wasn't just winning last night in the South. He was winning by very, very large margins. Long way of saying between these four states next week and where the delegate total is likely to end up when everything is tallied from last night. Donald Trump is on track to have a very good shot of clearing that threshold one week from last night on March 12th. We'll see if Nikki Haley is still in the race then, but that is now on the docket uh, potentially for next week. But looking at these results from last night, uh, you were talking early in the primary season, Nikki Haley, her, her line, you know, you heard was she was getting 43 in New Hampshire, 40 in South Carolina. She was calling it, quote, the 40%. She was saying that was 40% consistently in these primaries, not going for Donald Trump. Well, that number is not what we were seeing last night. It started in one of the states that if Haley were having a really good night last night. And I think if she were getting the kind of energy that she did have in New Hampshire and South Carolina, a state like Virginia would have been a ripe target for her. You know, you got big population dense northern Virginia, a lot of suburbs, a lot of voters with college degrees. These have been sort of her bread and butter. Uh, and take a look here. She loses this thing by 28 points. Uh, that's a worse showing than she had in South Carolina, worse showing in New Hampshire, even though Virginia, more demographic favorable to her than those states. You go south to North Carolina. I don't think a, a lot of folks, including the Haley folks, probably thought they were going to win North Carolina, but there's areas in North Carolina, the Triangle, the Charlotte areas, there's college areas where it looks ripe for her. And look at this. She's going to lose the state by more than 50 points last night. You see it in Tennessee last night. She doesn't crack 50. No surprise that she lost Alabama, but only with 13 percent of the vote. You go to Arkansas. She couldn't crack 20 there. And then I think the, the big Biggest noteworthy uh, state last night just on this front is Texas. I mean, look at this. She's going to lose it by 60 points. And again, we just talk about the areas Haley had been doing relatively well in early in southern New Hampshire, uh, in South Carolina. She won a congressional district in South Carolina. These, these suburban areas, you know, there's a lot of suburban areas around Austin, around Houston, the Metroplex, Dallas, and a lot of suburban areas around the state that, again, on paper, you look at the demographics and you say, well, look, Haley may not win Texas. But she can start picking off some districts here. And, and I mean, just getting clobbered, H H Haley was in these, you know, suburban areas. Take a look here, you know, Collin County, north of Dallas. She's losing it by 45 points, you know, 52 points. Take a look here. Uh, oh, let me zoom up. It's a little small one. But take a look here. This is one of the wealthiest counties in Texas. She's losing it by 57 points last night. So you, you add all of this together. She did pick off a win late at night in Vermont, um, you know, and we said we were going into this thinking if Haley had a shot anywhere, the probably Vermont was top of that list. She does yeah. get a narrow win. She does get the ability to say she won a state. But if you add up all the votes that were, I'll show you just California's results, too. It's a closed primary, but under 20 percent there and more votes to be counted. And I point that out because one thing we've been tracking is just what was the cumulative vote last night? If you added together all of the primaries, all the caucuses on the Republican side, uh, what share of the vote was Haley getting, given that she'd been using that 40 percent as, as sort of a, a talking point in the campaign trail? Currently, and again, with a lot of votes that are come in California, she's running at uh, just under 24 percent. It's about 23, uh, excuse me, just uh, under 23 percent. It's 22.8 percent right now. And again, as those California results come in, if they keep up where they are, that number could fall earlier. So essentially, that 40 percent she's been talking about uh, on the campaign trail heading into last night, last night translated to just a tick over 20 percent for her. All right. Hey, NBC Steve Kornacki, thank you so thank much. You, Steve. God, greatly appreciate Thanks, Steve. it. You're the best. We, we have a terrier poodle coming <laughs> your way <laughs> uh, as thanks dogs. from your friends yeah. at Morning Joe. <laughs>